Hello everyone, um, you're back at the OC Show, episode 2 of season 2. My name is Peter, this is Tim, hey. and uh, today we're going to talk about everything that happened in the past two weeks. And that's a lot, starting with uh, some clarifications about the HW World Tour. That's right, so there has been many questions in regards to um, what do you actually get if you come to the, to the HW World Tour. So you have to remember that the HW World Tour, that's the name of the event could be anything popcorn any anything you want but this is a show of Road. that's the event so when you come there uh, you have um, different choices of what you can do and the, the most important one is the bench party so this is uh, just like a LAN party so you bring your own PC you bring your, you bring your own gear we take care of supplying LN2 for three days and you just come there to bench whatever you want so for this you need a ticket this is called the bench spot ticket mm -hmm. that's it so there's no mandatory thing where you have to participate in competitions and stuff like that. The competition that is proposed there, part of the World Series, is a standalone competition that acts as some kind of a connected competition to all the other World Tour events. But this is completely optional and there's no requirements to participate. Okay, so if I if I get this correctly, we have the we have the World Tour as the event, mm -hmm. which includes a freestyle benching you can do anything you want with the LM2 that's supplied you can choose to participate in the World Series tournament that is being held at one of the World Tour uh, events or each right. of the World Tour events and then there's this other World Series for amateurs which is just a tournament for only the amateurs yeah. who are attending this this event as well yeah so what is uh, interesting with the World Tour is that we we try to do that at um, events where there's already people there right because it's always really hard to connect to people and especially if they are beginners in overclocking they might not be ready to, to, to pay necessarily to go for just overclocking especially if they don't know anything about it so what we're doing we're combining the World Tour events with LAN parties so the World Tour for the World Series for amateur competition that's one that is mainly open to the actual people that are already there so the gamers from the LAN parties or the visitors that want to pass by so for example at LAN ETS there's a, it's open to visitors and free for visitors. So visitors plus LAN party gamers can attend. For the gamers assembly, so the one in France for Europe, um, this one uh, visitors have to pay 10 euros to uh, get in. Okay. But there's all, and gamers are also accepted as well. So that's the only difference. For everything else, it's the bench spot ticket and uh, prices are approximately the same between yeah. Europe and US. So most important part is that if you come for the free LAN 2, you pay your... And then to bench spot, and you can Sorry. do you can do basically anything you want throughout the entire weekend. So there is no requirement to join the World Series. You can join the World Series if you want to. If you just want to do freestyle benching, you can no. do it as well. You so, can do core to do a benching. I mean, like for people like Bob, uh, that would be that would be alright as well. Yeah, no limitation. Very well. Now I understand. Now everything is very clear. <laughs> so talking about World Tour, um, we're going to announce uh, later this week. So by the time you see that episode, they will be already out. So you can get the the bank spot tickets for the Gamers Assembly in Europe. That ticket will be at 70 euros. So um, this will be approximately the same price that what we have in um, in Canada, and it covers uh, the fees for accessing the land party uh, for three days and uh, the LN2, of course. Uh, what is uh, very interesting as well at the Gamers Assembly is that if you want to take a break from benching, uh, actually every desk is going to be provided with a LAN cable, so you, you can actually play games as well and participate to the tournaments there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so anything else we have to say? I think the about the World Tour, that's pretty much it. We should move back to HW about stuff where some cool stuff happened actually in the previous two weeks. Uh, where we saw Dan Cup taking the number one position. Well, actually, it's it's quite funny because when we were planning the schedule for this episode, Dan Cup was still number one, and it was yeah. one of the items on our list. But uh, just two days ago, right before the weekend, uh, eight pack from the UK, from the United Kingdom, uh, jumped back in the league. Mm -hmm. he, he, at a certain point, he submitted a whole bunch of results, dominating the front page, and he jumped up to three thousand one hundred points in the ranking. So, so now the distance is m way greater than it used to be, right, between first and second. Yeah, so the difference between Dan Kopp and, and APAC one when they were uh, respectively uh, first and second was about 50 to 100 points tops. And then as APAC jumped to first place, um, he, he had 3,100 odd points. And then Dan Kopp had about, had about 2,800 points. <laughs> but Dan Kopp already submitted a couple more results, taking some points away from APAC again. So the difference is about 200 points as we're recording this. Um, but yeah, it seems to be a battle of two fantastic CPUs who um, 
Yeah, by two fantastic overclockers as well. They're yeah. putting up an insane amount of scores and an insane amount of quality scores as well. So the battle is not over, I suppose. No, and that goes... Oh, well, we cannot really say that about the competitions that we've been running. The Mobile Geeks, <laughs> in the Mobile Geeks one, the battle is yeah. actually over. The Mobile Geeks competition finished actually um, around the, the around the last episode we shot, but there were so much things to mention in the previous episode we couldn't fit it in. But that one was really interesting because it's the first competition where we see over three gigahertz on a mobile CPU. Actually, on that uh, eight hundred one SoC, right? We've we've seen over three gigahertz on mobile devices before, but not in yeah. a, not in a competitive area. So it was a a rise from Romania right. who um, as 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 I get from his interview that we posted on HWBot put his phone into the fridge to get better ambient temperatures and then he mentioned that a lot of the a lot of the competition part is actually tuning tuning the the, the, the ROM and right. tuning the kernel to make sure that you can run at those three gigahertz yeah. speeds but it was certainly interesting I mean the one plus one actually kind of dominated that competition yeah. Yeah, it was um, well. He was well, used a different phone, right? He used um, the LG three. I think that's the one with the the, the button on the back. Oh, uh, the G three. Yeah. Yeah. So he was using this one on the face change. Like he already uh, used to uh, tweak that phone. I know. I think it was in a previous uh, previous competition or something. I, I saw I saw one of the forum threads about the score, and yeah. again the, the winner Arise was mentioning. He, he showed um, in the forum some pictures of the breakdown of the LG. Oh right, right, right. And his point, the the point he made is that the the phase change was actually cooling the wrong side of the of the phone. Mm -hmm. So it was cooling the 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 memory IC, but the SLC was actually on the other side. Oh, yeah. So he was questioning whether this phase change actually had a significant impact on the clocks and. You know, provided that Arise actually had a better clock frequency than Hiwa, maybe maybe had a valid point there. The yeah. phase change didn't really affect the, the the overclockability of the phone that much. I guess also for um, for Hiwa, it was maybe not possible right, to put phase change on the other side because you have the display right. Yeah. And the problem on the smartphones, the way it is usually, it's kind of at a solder. There's a very short nap circuit, so there's just there's no way you can separate both unless you have the access to testing boards or something like yeah. that. True. Um, well, very interesting competition. Um, so Arise won a uh, Oppo Oppo phone provided by Mobile Geeks. So that that's really cool. Yeah, thank and you, I, thank I you, guess, Mobile yeah, Geeks. I guess we should make more of those contests. It seems very fun. Next time we should open it up to more more SOCs. Well, we already have the Challenger Division uh, Division Six, right. which is completely for ARM devices. So if you want to compete with your mobile phone or with your uh, or with your on, uh, Android tablet, you can sign up for the Road to Pro Challenger Division 6. Uh, the first round is held from February 1st to March 31st. 31st. Right. So that's uh, that's part of the, like you said, the Road to Pro structure. And the Challenger series, that's, uh, that's actually very intricate because you can participate in only one of the divisions. Yep, so we have seven divisions ranging from uh, from Core i7 with the most high-end single GPU graphics card right. to a legacy uh, system where you know only the older hardware is allowed. So you, you go from i7, i5, i3 to AMD FX, mm -hmm. AMD APU and ARM legacy. Virtually any you know any type of hardware that you can find you'll be able to compete in the Challenger divisions. Uh, the idea is that we have three rounds throughout the year and then at, at the end of the year we crown uh, division champion for each of the divisions. Um, the full explanation of how it works is posted on HWBot. Um, it's yeah. quite a lengthy explanation. We don't have the mu yeah. that much time to go over it yeah, here. Uh, you, I guess better is you just read through it. Yeah, it's, I agree. It's still quite simple. In, in, in very simple terms, you pick your division, pick your hardware category and try to become champion in that one. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Next competition. That one uh, is also very interesting. We should mention it. It's the Turrican um, Charity Challenge. So uh, I haven't uh, known much Turrican, so probably you better to to introduce the person. Yeah, that, it's kind of a sad story because Turrican um, Carl, he was with the uh, HWBot staff for a very, very long time. Yeah. And um, I, he's one of those people that behind the scenes was doing so much work without asking for anything in return. Mm -hmm. I remember last year we tried to get him to Computex. We wanted to like buy his plane ticket, to like look for his accommodation and like he couldn't make it. And yeah. then um, I think last September he uh, he passed away uh, in, a, in a car accident and kind of came to a shock to all of us at the staff. You know, it's, he's been, he was with us for so long and then all of a sudden in a, in a snap of a, the snap yeah. of a moment, he, he's gone and only after like after he passed away, we really we realized how much work he was 
doing in the in the be behind the scenes at HW about even even I was unaware of how much work yeah. he was actually doing maintaining the database but also you know following up with the with the old hardware he was he was basically a, a walking hardware library yeah. so together with his um, home forum at overclockers uh, um, Austria we set up the the Turk and memorial Chari charity uh, challenge there's uh, there's two benchmarks in it both um, based on uh, GPU Pi, GPU Pi yeah. which is a, a benchmark developed by um, the forum admis administrator at uh, Overclockers Australia, uh, Austria, sorry. And um, so there's two challenges. The one is submit with the oldest hardware as possible, yeah. and then the other one is just full out as fast as possible. And um, we extended the competition to the end of uh, of February uh, because uh, EK uh, Waterblocks. Put up some prizes as well. Right. So um, this prize is from Noctua and EK Waterbrook. Yeah, right? exactly. And you can also another thing you can do is actually you can buy a um, a, uh, a, a hardware terminator shirt. Yeah. For, for from Carl, that was kind of his nickname, and uh, fifty percent of the proceedings of that T-shirt sale goes to a charity of a kinder uh, uh, of a of a children's hospital oh, yeah, yeah. in Austria. So Noctua is actually also for each for each of the competitors in um, in the competition they put up a a, a, a cash as yeah. well for for the, oh, for the charity. Cool, yeah. yeah. So I think right now there's something like 60, uh, 60, 70 people in the competition. Yeah. yeah. So we I would urge anyone to submit to the competition yeah. in in memoriam of uh, of Carl. This Even if you don't have the hardware to win, just. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you have some old motherboard at home, that might be the the right occasion to pull them out and try to reinstall some XP somehow and on the benchmark. <laughs> yeah. So one more competition that launched uh, last week is the yeah. ROG OC Showdown 2015. Yeah. So the ROG OC Showdown, it's um, it's something quite uh, quite interesting because it's uh, it's following the the series structure that uh, was introduced with the OC Esports side. So uh, the idea is that uh, very similarly to the MOA, for instance, where you have uh, different qualifiers in the final, um, the ROG OC series is aiming at being a series of competitions that all tie up into one final ranking at the end of the season, I suppose. So um, right now the guys at ASUS, they launch two competitions. So there's one uh, which is called the uh, Extreme Series and you have the Formula Series. So the Extreme one, that's for obviously Extreme and uh, LN2 guys. So Extreme and uh, Elite Division uh, League, sorry, at HW, but yeah. and then you have the the Formula one that's for the the more air cooling guys or water cooling. So you have a novice, um, rookies, and enthusiasts. Yeah. So the first competition that that launched um, last weekend mm -hmm. on my birthday, actually January thirtieth. Yeah, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you very much. What what a great occasion. Um, anyway, the competition launched uh, runs until. March 2nd if I'm not uh, mistaken and then after that we launched a formula competition so it's yeah. kind of in two it's not running at the same time it's in two brackets oh, right. um, very important you can only have one account so you have to sign up for one of either of the, of the, of the competitions uh, as said before if you're elite or extreme you can only go to the extreme series if you're if you haven't done yeah. any LM2 in the past and no um, experience with extreme cooling, you can go into the Formula Series competition. Yeah. Right. So that's very interesting because it's. Uh, I think it's. There's not that many competitions where we actually. Um, I wouldn't say segregate, but like uh, split off like the two types of overclocking, which are very different on the on the on the basics of how high you actually clock, right? So it's gonna be interesting to see how many people actually decide to go for the just for the air one or maybe eventually move on to the extreme because the, the prices are also different mm -hmm. not the same kind of prices you can win but yeah well all the information is up on hwbot and oc esports uh if you have any questions you can also put them in the comments below i yeah, suppose that sure. someone's monitoring the uh, comments i'm trying to monitor that <laughs> once in a while <laughs> and um in case you don't have any questions and you like this video give it a thumbs up yeah and um if not then well, close this window, I suppose. Oh, and don't forget, next Monday, a, uh, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S., we have another Q&A session. So last time that was on a Sunday, this time it's on a Monday, so pay attention. Truthman is skiing, so you can do that every day. <laughs> All right, so uh, until the next time, yeah, stay have tuned. a good day. Bye.